Hello and welcome to our channel. Today we will plunge into the history of one of the most famous mafiosi of America, John Gotti, an incredibly charismatic criminal who brought his criminal family to an unprecedented level of greatness. Fasten your seat belts and without further ado, we will begin our immersion into the world of Gotti. John Gotti was born in the Bronx, New York on October 27, 1940, to John Joseph Gotti Sr. and Fanny Gotti. He was the fifth of 13 children in a household where money was scarce, but family ties were strong. The Gotti family later moved to Brooklyn, and it was in these neighborhoods, shaped by a mix of working-class grit and criminal enterprises, that Gotti's life path began to take shape. At the age of 14, John Gotti tried to steal a concrete mixer and lived for the rest of his life due to the fall of the unit on his leg. The flaw did not prevent the Mafia star from shining in the aristocratic community until a tip from his associates provoked a failure. While not aristocrats of the underworld, members of the Gotti family had their share of run-ins with the law. Gotti's father was a day laborer who struggled to make ends meet and had a minor criminal record. His inability to provide for his family seemed to have affected young John Gotti deeply, planting the seeds for his own ambition to rise above the limitations of his early life. Family ties with distant relatives and neighborhood figures who were involved in organized crime offered Gotti a glimpse into a world where power and respect came quickly, albeit at a great risk. From a young age, Gotti exhibited a rebellious streak that often led him into trouble. School records indicate frequent disciplinary problems, and he became known for his tenacious and confrontational demeanor. The poverty he experienced growing up seemed to instill in him an insatiable desire for material success which traditional means of employment appeared unlikely to satisfy. By his teenage years, Gotti had already begun his criminal activities, starting with petty crimes like shoplifting and escalating to more serious offenses such as car theft. He was a street-smart kid who quickly learned the art of survival in a tough neighborhood. His natural charisma and fearlessness made him a popular figure among local gangs, providing him with both a sense of belonging and the foundations for his future criminal endeavors. Gotti's entry into organized crime can be traced back to his association with local mobsters, who recognized his potential and audacity. One of his earliest mentors was Carmen Fatico, a cap regime in the Gambino crime family, one of the five families that dominated organized crime in New York City. Fatico took Gotti under his wing and introduced him to various criminal enterprises, ranging from loan sharking to hijacking. Another influential figure in Gotti's life was Aniello Delacroix, the underboss of the Gambino family. Delacroix saw something special in Gotti and took the young criminal under his direct tutelage. This relationship not only accelerated Gotti's rise through the ranks but also provided him with a level of protection and guidance that was critical in the volatile world of organized crime. It was during this time that Gotti formed his crew, which would include future turncoat Sammy the Bull Gravano. Together, they engaged in a wide array of criminal activities, slowly establishing Gotti's reputation as both a moneymaker and a man not to be trifled with. Gotti showed a level of commitment and audacity that endeared him to some and terrified others. By the late 1970s and early 1980s, Gotti had moved from being an enforcer and a cap regime to being one of the most influential figures in the Gambino family. Gotti's ascent was not without its challenges. The world of organized crime is fraught with internal strife, and the Gambino family was no exception. The family was ruled by Paul Castellano, who had succeeded Carlo Gambino. Castellano's leadership style and priorities were often at odds with the more street-smart faction of the family, represented by figures like Gotti and Delacroix. Upon the death of his mentor Delacroix in 1985, Gotti felt that the time had come for a changing of the guard. The tension between the Castellano and Delacroix factions reached a boiling point. Gotti, viewing Castellano as an obstacle to both his and the family's interests, decided to take a monumental risk. He orchestrated Castellano's assassination, a daring move that defied Mafia tradition and carried immense personal risk. The audacious move paid off. After Castellano was gunned down outside a Manhattan steakhouse, Gotti was swiftly anointed the new boss of the Gambino family. His navigation through internal power struggles revealed not just his ruthlessness, but also a keen understanding of political dynamics within organized crime. Under Gotti's leadership, the Gambino family expanded its operations significantly, both within the United States and internationally. While the family's influence was most heavily concentrated in the New York metropolitan area, 
Gotti oversaw the expansion of operations into other states, including New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Florida. Internationally, the family was involved in drug trafficking operations that extended to South America and Europe. Gotti's management style was less centralized than his predecessors, allowing cap regimes more autonomy in their operations as long as they paid their dues and maintained loyalty. This decentralization allowed for an expansion of various criminal enterprises, including but not limited to drug trafficking, extortion, and loan sharking. But it wasn't just about criminal activities. Gotti sought to influence unions, construction, and even waste management sectors, embedding the Gambino family in the fabric of legitimate society in an unprecedented way. His reign marked the apex of the family's power, and his audacious style, coupled with media fascination, made him the face of organized crime in America during his tenure. Because of his fame, John Gotti has a lot of nicknames attached to him. Here are the three most popular. John Boy. This nickname stuck to John because of his constant dapper appearance and the same constant appearances in the media sphere. There was nothing out of the ordinary for him to give an interview or an autograph. Ordinary onlookers, whom other members of Cosa Nostra treated with caution and disdain, could beat them or even kill them, John considered his fans. Dark John. Gotti earned this nickname either because of his swarthy skin color or because he did not disdain to work with black gangs. But the nickname Teflon Don is the most status, because it was received by Gotti due to the fact that he survived the assassination attempt and was acquitted three times by the court, as if he was Teflon, to which the charges did not stick. In 1992, John Gotti and Salvatore Graveno are arrested and charged with murder and racketeering. During the interrogation, Gotti decided to blame all the blame on Gravano, and Salvatore had no choice but to cooperate with the investigation and testify against someone he considered his friend. Gravano's testimony was enough for John Gotti to be convicted in 1992 and receive his life sentence. In the late 90s, John Gotti was diagnosed with throat cancer. He was placed in a prison hospital full of professional doctors. Qualified oncologists removed a malignant tumor, this event became the topic of American news. Two years later, new metastases caused sudden death. The boss of the Gambino family died in the early 2000s. To get permission for a decent funeral from the Roman Catholic diocese, the relatives of the criminal authority cost incredible efforts. After a solemn ceremony held in a non-church room, the body of the American mafia was placed in the family crypt. Gotti was laid to rest not far from his youngest son Frank, who died in a car accident at the age of 12. This is the end of our video today. The mark left by John in the criminal world and culture is undeniable, but, as usual, even the most successful criminal is behind bars. Thank you for your attention. If you like our videos, please like and subscribe to the channel. Until next time.